Hey guys, alright? Welcome everyone. In the beginning, the powerful beings known as Celestials created the sun and other forms of life, and the universe was in harmony. But one day, an unnatural species of predators called Deviants emerges from deep space and begins to destroy everything in their path. The leader of the Celestials, Aris Hem, brings together an immortal group of superhumans known as the Eternals from the planet Olympia and sends them in their ship called the Dome to Earth. In Mesopotamia, in 5000 BC, a group of humans is fishing when suddenly they are attacked by deviants emerging from the sea. At that moment, the Eternals arrive to defend them with their powers, Ikaris uses his I-beams and flies to fight the beasts, while Mac Carey uses her super speed to move the humans to safety. Kingo fires energy blasts to attack from a distance, while Thena and Gilgamesh summon energy weapons for close combat. Sprite provides support with her illusions, and Fastos also assists with his advanced inventions. A fierce battle unfolds, and thanks to the excellent cooperation of the Eternals, the Deviants are soon defeated, and the team's leader, Ajak, heals any wounds they suffered in battle. The humans are frightened of them and attempt to attack, but Druig immediately uses his mind control powers to calm them. Then, Cersei transforms a primitive knife into real metal as proof that they are there to help humanity. Thousands of years pass, and in modern times, the Eternals live pretending to be normal among humans. In London, Cersei goes to class, where she was supposed to give a lesson, and finds her boyfriend Dane filling in for her. Suddenly, the lecture is interrupted by a massive earthquake, so Cersei has her students take cover under the tables and uses her power to prevent debris from crushing a student. By the nearby river, a dog witnesses a deviant emerging from the river. At night, Cersei celebrates Dane's birthday with some friends. Sprite uses an illusion to appear older and hide the fact that she ages mentally but not physically. However, the illusion is broken if anyone touches her, and she quickly gives it up to avoid that. Dane asks Cersei to move in with him, but she refuses, and he begins to wonder if she's hiding something because Sprite is always making strange comments. After the party, the trio walks home, but they are suddenly attacked by a massive deviant named Crow. Cersei uses her powers to pin him to the ground, but Crow soon breaks free and runs into the streets. Sprite casts an illusion that multiplies herself and Cersei to confuse the monster, but Crow surprises them by being able to identify who the real ones are, something the deviants have never been able to do. When Crow is about to kill Sprite, Ikaris appears and saves her, then goes on to fight the deviant directly. Their battle causes a bus to flip over, and Cersei rushes to turn the vehicle into rose petals to prevent an accident. Crow surprises everyone again when he reveals that he can heal his own wounds, but it's clear that Ikaris has the upper hand, and Crow escapes through the river. Later, Cersei tells Dane the truth about her identity, and he asks why they never helped in humanity's greatest tragedies. Cersei explains that they were instructed never to interfere in human affairs to avoid disrupting their development as a society. After defeating the Deviants, they were instructed to wait on Earth until it was time to return home. She also tells Dane that she and Ikaris have been together for centuries, but it didn't work out. Later, she returns to her apartment to discuss the matter with Sprite and Ikaris, and after coming to the conclusion that the Earthquake and the Deviant are connected, they agree that they need to reunite the team. This brings back memories from 575 BC in Babylon. Humanity is developing under the guidance of the Eternals, who fight the Deviants whenever they try to attack. Whenever they appear, they are violent and cruel, but the Eternals fight together in perfect synchrony to quickly kill them without much trouble. After a particularly intense battle, a Jack uses her special power stone to establish a connection and speak to Arishem. She expresses respect for his grand plan but doesn't like what it might mean for humans. Arishem tells her not to get attached to them and to proceed with the plan. Afterwards, a Jack returns to the hideout where the Eternals are living openly among society. Fastos is developing a steam engine to provide to humanity, and Sprite uses her powers to entertain children with stories that come to life through her illusions. Druig likes to use his mind control to stop fights, but Mac Carey reprimands him because they shouldn't interfere. Meanwhile, Ikaris and Cersei spend time together and fall in love, admitting it to each other with the beauty of the earth as a witness. Years later, they get married in the Gupta Empire in India. Back in the present, Cersei, Sprite, and Ikaris travel to a Jack's ranch in South Dakota, only to find her dead outside her home. Sprite mourns and uses an illusion to remember her fondly, as she was very fond of her. 
They conclude that Crow killed a Jack, somehow absorbing her powers, which is why he was able to heal. When Cersei approaches the body to mourn, the stone on a Jack's body, granted to her by the Celestials, comes loose and attaches itself to Cersei. This causes her to briefly have a glimpse of Aris Hem saying, it's almost time, before losing sight of him. Sprite points out that a Jack chose Cersei as her successor, but Ikaris is concerned that it might be Mod Wire. This brings up another memory, in 1521 AD in Tenochtitlan, the capital of the Aztec Empire, the group was fighting the last remaining deviants on the planet. While humans are at war, as they always have been throughout history, Druid wants to stop them from continuing, but a Jack doesn't allow it because they must not interfere in human conflicts. Suddenly, Thena starts feeling sick and begins to say it's too late because they will all die soon. Her eyes change, and she starts attacking her friends, hurting some of them thanks to the element of surprise. A Jack allows her to hurt her on purpose to get close and use her powers on her mind, freeing her from this strange impulsive reaction. Thena still attacks, so Gilgamesh steps forward and fights her until he manages to knock her out. Later, when Thena wakes up without remembering what happened, it is revealed that she suffers from Ma Wire, a result of her ancient memories collapsing on themselves and driving her to insanity. There is no cure for it, the only way to make her better would be to completely wipe her mind so she could start over, which a Jack thinks is the best solution for her and everyone's safety. The others don't want to lose the Thena they love, and Druid yells at a Jack, questioning her leadership. He is tired of watching humanity destroy itself like savage beasts without being able to interfere, so he angrily uses his powers to stop the war and goes to work on his own, announcing to everyone that if they want to stop him, they'll have to kill him because he will continue with his ideology. Gilgamesh announces that he can take care of Fina, so a jack allows everyone to go and live among humans. The deviants have already been defeated, so now they can find their own purpose while waiting for the call back home. Back in the present, Cersei, Sprite, and Ikaris travel to Mumbai to find Kingo, who is now a famous Bollywood superstar. His butler, Karun, knows his secret and has been working with him for decades. The trio tells Kingo what's happening, and at first, he refuses to go, saying he enjoys this life. However, Karun convinces Kingo to go and be the hero everyone admires, and Karun even agrees to accompany him to record everything in a documentary style. They take Kingo's private jet to Australia, where Sprite expresses annoyance with Kingo for abandoning her for fame, but Kingo explains that he became an actor thanks to the inspiration provided by Sprite's storytelling. In Australia, the team follows a trail of deviant bodies to find Thena and Gilgamesh at their private country home. Gilgamesh has become skilled in cooking and housekeeping, and Thena spends her time creating dark drawings. When she sees them arriving, she has another lapse and tries to attack them, saying that everyone on the planet will die soon but Gilgamesh stops her, and Sprite clears her mind with an illusion that reminds her of who she really is. Cersei takes the opportunity to look at Thena's drawings and feels bad because she can't reconnect with Eris Hem, but Gilgamesh encourages her and reminds her that it's more important to listen. Cersei sits down and relaxes, which finally activates the stone and makes it appear in front of Eris Hem. He tells her that the emergence is happening and explains the true purpose of the Eternals, they were sent to bring about the birth of the Celestial Tiamat, explaining that new Celestials arise every billion years, and they have already gone through this process on other planets before Earth. They arise through the energy of countless intelligent lifeforms on each planet, which, however, was interrupted by the Deviant's attack. But with the Eternals having rid themselves of them, Arishem says that now it's time to eliminate all life on Earth to make way for Tiamat. Cersei is horrified by the revelation, but Aris Hem defends it, saying that this is just the cycle of creation for their lifeforms. He then explains that Olympia never existed, and she and the other Eternals are just creations of the World Forge as artificial beings made to be used by the Celestials. Cersei can't remember this because the Eternals have their memories reset after each Celestial's emergence. Aris Hem also reveals that he created the Deviants to regulate the balance between predators and prey, so that intelligent life can thrive, but he lost control of the Deviants, and they became uncontrollable predators, evolving beyond expectation. That's why he made sure that the Eternals couldn't evolve like the Deviants. Later, Cersei tells the team what she discovered, and they realize that Fina's illness is actually her ancient memories activating and telling the truth. They are shocked and upset to find out that they are artificial, and most of them decide to find a way to save the people of Earth. They believe they must find Druig and see if he can use his power to control Tiamat's mind. The Eternals then travel to the Amazon. 
Druig is living in a village where he leads a group of people who live in absolute peace. He doesn't want to help the others on their mission, feeling betrayed by the fact that his entire existence is a lie. At night, Kingo expresses sympathy for Sprite because he knows she's in love with Akaris but couldn't act on it due to her childlike appearance. Sprite appreciates the sentiment until she realizes Karun is recording, and she breaks the camera. Cersei calls Dame to check on how he's doing, and Ikaris watches jealously, making Cersei ask why he left her. When Ikaris is about to explain himself, Crow suddenly appears and takes him away. More deviants attack the village, so the Eternals immediately spring into action. Cersei fortifies a building to hide the humans inside and then throws a series of trees at the deviants. Druid controls the humans like a unified army, but Cersei immediately makes him stop and send the humans to safety. Kingo takes a moment to charge his beam and kills a deviant by blowing up its head. Ikaris fights Crow, who pushes him to the ground to absorb his powers. However, Gilgamesh joins the fight next, and while they are engaged in battle, Thena loses her mind again and attacks Ikaris. Gilgamesh realizes this and steps away to go to Thena and comfort her, managing to calm her down. Then Ikaris goes after a flying deviant and makes it land in the village, where he kills several of them with his eye beams. One of them surprises him from behind, and Cersei comes to the rescue, surprising everyone by turning the deviant into a tree, something she was never able to do before. Gilgamesh continues to fight Crow, but he is so distracted taking care of Thena that Crow kills him and absorbs his powers. Then Crow shapeshifts, looking more human and learning to speak English. Crow accuses the Eternals of being murderers, but when Ikari shows up to fight, Crow flees. Then Thena rushes to Gilgamesh's side, who dies in her arms after telling her always to remember. Later, they burn Gilgamesh's body, and Thena scatters his ashes into the river. Finally understanding that controlling everyone wouldn't make him any better than a deviant, Druig agrees to join the mission, but his power isn't strong enough to control a celestial, so they'll need to find Fastos. Another memory shows 1945 in Hiroshima, shortly after the atomic bomb was dropped. Fastos stands amidst the aftermath of the explosion, crying to a jack and feeling remorse for helping humans develop and advance in technology, only for them to continue killing each other in a more deadly way. It's here that he loses faith in humanity and decides to leave it behind. Back in the present, the team arrives in Chicago and is amazed to find that Fastos lives with a husband and child in a suburban home. After hearing the story, Fastos explains that his husband has restored his faith in humanity, but he's not willing to leave his family for a dangerous mission. However, his husband tells him to go ahead with it if it means there will be a future for them and their child. Next, the Eternals travel to Iraq, where they use their powers to unearth the dome from its underground hideout. Mac Carey has been living there all along, using her speed only to get supplies. Fastos has the idea of connecting everyone's powers through the Unimind, one of his inventions, this will allow them to transfer their powers so that Druig has the necessary strength level to control Tiamat's mind. Kingo has doubts about the whole arrangement, and he and Sprite say they want to hear Ikaris's opinion, who clearly also has doubts. However, Ikaris tells his friend that he is not who Kingo thinks he is. Then, Ikaris revisits another memory. Six days earlier, a Jack is visiting Ikaris to tell him that the emergence has finally arrived, revealing that Ikaris has always known the truth. After living with humans all this time, a Jack believes they shouldn't proceed with the mission because humanity and Earth are beautiful, so they deserve something better. Ikaris tells a Jack he has something to show her first and takes her to Alaska. On a frozen lake, a pack of deviants has reappeared, and Ikaris explains that they were frozen for centuries before the ice began to melt due to the Earth's core growing warmer with the emergence's arrival. Then, Ikaris announces he is still loyal to Arisham and pushes a jack into the lake, where Crow quickly grabs her and absorbs her powers. Later, Ikaris takes a jack to the cottage, leaving the body for Cersei to find later. In her morning, he can't help but shoot beams that start a fire. Back in the present, Ikaris tells Cersei that he still loves her, and Cersei holds his hand in comfort without saying the same. Moments later, she feels the stone activating within her, which means the emergence is about to begin. Fastos sends Mac Carey to locate the source of the emergence, and with her super speed, she traverses the entire Earth to find the right location, which is an active volcano in the Indian Ocean. Suddenly, Ikaris dons his armor and announces that he wishes a jack hadn't chosen Cersei. He attacks the main room and reveals that he's known everything since they left Babylon, and the team realizes it was Ikaris who killed a jack. 
When Makari returns with the information, Ikaris tries to attack her, and Kingo takes the blow for her. No longer seeing Ikaris as their leader, Kingo wants to attack him back, but at this moment, Sprite announces that she is on his side and creates an illusion that allows them to escape. Then, Kingo announces he's leaving with Karun because he doesn't think saving Earth is a good idea, as the birth of the Celestials means new planets are being created too. The team needs a new plan to compensate for the missing members, and Druid points out that Cersei was able to turn a deviant into a tree. However, Cersei still has doubts because she doesn't understand why she was chosen by a jack, so Fina explains that a leader protects their loved ones, and a jack knew that Cersei loved humanity from day one. Ready to fight, Cersei allows Fastos to remove the special stone from her body and use it to power the Unimind. The Eternals travel to the volcano, and Ikaris orders Sprite to protect the Emergence while he invades the ship. Fina starts fighting him to keep him distracted, giving the others time to activate the Unimind, which deactivates the volcano. Ikaris rushes to stop them, first grabbing Druig and killing him with his eye beams, then attacking the ship to make it crash. Furious, Mac Carey starts fighting fiercely against Ikaris as the volcano behind them erupts to initiate the emergence. Cersei rushes to the volcano to see if she can do anything, while Thena and Fastos join Makari to fight Ikaris, but he is too powerful, and they can't stop him even if they work together. At this moment, Crow arrives and joins the fight, focusing on Ikaris. However, the others don't want him to become more powerful, so they attack him first. Makari traps him in a tornado of debris, and Thena kicks him, sending him into a cave. Ikaris takes advantage of the distraction to try to go after Cersei, but Fastos uses a special trap he invented to capture and immobilize him. Inside the cave, Crow uses Gilgamesh's voice to mess with Thena's mind, making her lower her guard. However, when he's about to absorb her powers, he accidentally quotes Remember from Gilgamesh, and Thena immediately wakes up and kills him. At the top of the volcano, Cersei is shocked to find a jack, only to be suddenly stabbed. A jack had been an illusion created by Sprite, who had always been jealous of Cersei for being able to live an adult life. She prepares her powers to accelerate the emergence, but at that moment, Druig appears and knocks her out. Suddenly, the ground begins to tremble, and the sea goes wild as Tiamat emerges from the volcano. Cersei stands on top of him and tries to use her powers to stop him, but at that moment, Ikaris breaks free from Fastos's trap and goes after her. However, upon seeing the woman he carries in his memories, he can't bring himself to kill her. Cersei seizes the chance to activate the Unimind, which allows her to amplify her powers to turn Tiamat into nothing more than a giant stone statue. Realizing his mistake, Ikaris apologizes in tears and flies into space, where the sun burns him to match the legend of his name. Sprite is devastated to see him go, but Cersei still has some power from the Unimind, so she uses it to remove Sprite's immortality so she can live a normal human life. Once their mission is over, the Eternals part ways once again. Thena joins Makkari and Druig at the dome as they search for other Eternals, while Fastos returns to his family, Sprite enrolls in a boarding school, and Kingo goes back to his films. Cersei reunites with Dane, who accepts her for who she is. Suddenly, Arisham appears in the sky and summons Cersei, Kingo, and Fastos. He tells them that he knows they betrayed him, so he will take them to trial, 